Hi, I'm Dr. Monty Stewart, proud principal of the Venus Bobcats, where we are transforming dreams into reality. So I want to welcome you to our virtual parent summit this school year. Also, as you'll see later on, we have some scholars that's doing some awesome work and their achievements here at school. So thank you for joining us. Good evening, parents and guardians. My name is Gilbert Polito, and I am the proud principal of Boyd Elementary. We are doing some amazing things here at Boyd Elementary, and I'm hoping that soon things will open up so we can invite you onto our campus so you can see what our amazing staff is doing and how great our wonderful students are doing. So other than that, thank you so much. Go Bulldogs! Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Cuevas, acting principal at Carter High School. I am honored to serve this amazing community of students, parents, and staff. At Carter, we strive for excellence inside and outside of the classroom. Go Lions! Hello everyone, welcome to our annual Parent Summit. My name is Emily Dominguez. I am the proud KC principal. And we are KC scholars and leaders. We are the responsible, and safe. Greetings, this is Owen Ross, the proud principal of Curtis Elementary School. Welcome this year's Virtual Parent Summit. This year, we've been focusing very hard on literacy. We've included reading specialists for small group instruction. Later, you're gonna see some students talk about the amazing growth they've made in iReady. That's due largely to the increased focus on reading, writing, and in particular, focus on small group instruction. Hopefully you enjoy the Parent Summit and see some of the great student achievements that we have to offer here at Curtis. Thank you. Greetings, family, and thank you for joining us for this year's annual Parent Summit. My name is Daniel Husbands, and I'm the very proud principal of Dallahan Elementary School, a lighthouse leader in East School. We are so glad that you're here to join us and be a part of this uh, great opportunity. Um, we have so many wonderful things that we want you to see, including all of our students and their growth that they've had this year. We have some videos coming up of some students who are going to share their great growth that they've had this year. Despite all the setbacks that we've had, that's all we've seen this year is growth from our students. And so we just want to uh, celebrate this time with you and we want to thank you for joining us for this year's annual Parent Summit. Hello everyone and welcome to our virtual Parent Summit. My name is Mario Carranza, the proud principal of Dunn Elementary School, where our dolphins are safe, respectful, responsible, and are making extremely great progress in their academics. Hello Eagles and the Eagle community. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Frank Camacho, the proud principal of Eisenhower High School. We are built on legacy of excellence. My goal is to make provide, making sure we provide all our students the equity and access to all our resources. Uh, thank you again for being here at the Parent Summit. Please, please, please get as much information as possible. If you have any questions or concerns um, in anything that you learned today, please feel re um, reach out to me so I can answer those questions. Thank you so much. Go Eagles! Hi, I'm Tina Lingenfelter, and I am the proud principal here at Fitzgerald Elementary School. I'm so proud of the growth and achievement our Fitzgerald scholars have made this year since returning to school in person. Go Foxes! Hi, I'm Dr. Matt Gaines, the principal of Frisbee Middle School. Very proud that some of our students are being highlighted for their achievements. Go Falcons! We will continue to soar to excellence. Hello parents and welcome to this year's annual Parent Summit. My name is Ramona Rodriguez and I am the proud principal of Dr. Ernest Garcia Elementary School where we ignite curiosity. This year our theme has been Just Keep Swimming together and that's what we've done here at Garcia. We hope you enjoy this virtual parent summit. Thank you very much Garcia families. Hola padres y bienvenidos a la cumbre de padres anual. Yo soy la señora Ramona Rodríguez, la directora orgullosa de la escuela primaria Garcia, donde nosotros despertamos la curiosidad. Ojalá disfruten de la cumbre de padres. En la escuela de Garcia nosotros este año es solo seguimos nadando. Juntos, que disfrutan de la cumbre. Muchísimas gracias. 
Hello, my name is Dr. Mitzi Moreland and I am the proud principal of Henry Elementary Visual and Performing Arts School. This is where the Hawks soar to their highest academic potential. And we are very proud of our scholars here at Henry Elementary. Go Hawks! Hello, I am Dr. Danielle Osondoaguike, proud principal of Hugh Banks Elementary School, home of the Huskies. Our community is all in working in collaboration with parents, students, and teachers so that we can be positively the best. I look forward to sharing our success throughout this year with each and every one of you. We are having an amazing year. Greetings, welcome to our Parent Summit. I'm the proud principal of J. Hugh Middle School. We're excited to show you what we have to offer for your students. Go Jaguars! Hello and welcome, parents, students, and community members of Rialto Unified School District. Thank you so much for being here today. I'd like to welcome you and introduce myself. I am Dr. Rollins, principal at Kelly Elementary School. Thank you for joining us at Rialto Unified School District's annual Parent Summit. Today joining us are fifth grade students from Kelly Elementary, Miss Eloa's class, DLI, Dual Language Immersion. Just wanting to let everybody know that at Kelly Elementary School, our mission is identified as the keys to success. Each and every day, our students, staff, and guests on campus demonstrate three things that are we Everybody, Kelly Qualis, give our community and all our guests a big hand. Thank you for being here. Hello parents, my name is Mr. Urtiega and I am the proud principal at Cold Middle School. We are very excited to have our students back on campus learning. Our teachers are doing an excellent job preparing our students for high school and we're looking forward to an awesome end of the school year and as we move forward to next year, making sure our students have the tools necessary to be excellent students. Go Cougars! Hi, my name is Dr. Ebony Kemp and I'm the proud principal of Nancy R. Kordiak Elementary School. I am so excited to have our amazing staff and scholars back this school year. Let's go Lion Cubs! Hello, I'm Dr. Straka, the proud principal of Kusara Middle School, and we are excited to be able to highlight just a few of our student scholars. Our students have a wealth of talents and skills that we support through academics, band, coding, art, esports, robotics, AVID, yearbook, and more. A special shout out to our parent committees, including our school site council, our English Learner Advisory Committee, and our North End Coalition African American Parent Advisory Committee. Your efforts, passion, and commitment shine through in all you do to support Kusara Middle School. To all of our parents, guardians, and families, this is a heartfelt thank you from me. I know you will enjoy our District Parent Summit. Go Coyotes! Hello parents, welcome to the 2022 Parent Summit. My name is Dr. Kyla Griffin, the proud principal of Myler High School, where success starts here because Myler is number one. We want to welcome you for our current parents. Thank you for all that you have contributed to our school community, especially to our recent model continuation high school designation by the state of California, our gold level green ribbon school designation this school year, to our prospective parents, our parents for next year. We want to welcome you with open arms. Our school has a garden where we practice science curriculum. We have a wellness center where we support the needs of your student, both in and out of school. We have extra academic supports with a reading specialist and a sight English learner facilitator. We take a bunch of trips to local junior colleges to ensure that your student has a graduation plan after they leave high school. And we want you to know that success does indeed start here. So thank you, welcome, and we'll see you on the graduation stage. My name is Alex Farah and I am the proud principal of Morgan Elementary School. I am excited to announce that our students are doing such a great job of completing all of their assignments and staying on task. 
They have done an excellent job of improving in the areas of reading and math. The teachers have done an excellent job of helping our students improve. Go Mustangs! Hello, I'm Carla Guzman, the always proud and, uh, principal of Morris Elementary School. We are an environmental learning school where we reduce environmental impact, we improve health and wellness, and we offer sustainable education. We're also a proud dual immersion school. Um, many of our students, kinder through fifth grade, are in these classes right now learning two languages. And through all of the academic success that we've had this year, even though through this pandemic, which has been very difficult, there's been a lot of amazing growth. And it's attributed to the amazing staff and teachers that we have here at Morris Elementary. Thank you to them for always being here for our students. Thank you to our parents for always supporting our students. And thank you to all of our community for always showing up and being here for our students. Um, we are trekking on every day. We are on the trail to the highest peak of learning. Our students have made great successes and continue to do so. Um, so with this being said, I cannot wait for the rest of the year um, and wait for what's coming up next. Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Camarena, proud principal at Myers Elementary. Welcome and go Dragons! You're a grand old school, you're a high spirit school, you're the best in the West. We all say Myers School, where kids are smart and do their part. We're loyal to you every day. Every heart beats true for our own colors too. You're the best in every way. All acquaintances be forgot. Our school is here to say my school. Hello, my name is Monica Radcliffe Perez and I am the proud principal here at Preston Elementary School. We are so excited to have our students back on campus this year and even more excited to welcome our parents back soon. Go Panthers! Welcome, my name is Kimberly Watson. I'm the principal here at Rialto Adult School. This is an exciting time to be a student here at Rialto Adult School. We offer various programs that include high school diploma, GED in English and Spanish, ESL where they can learn English. We also have CTE classes. Come and join us in our pharmacy tech program and our culinary programs. It's a wonderful time to participate in Rialto Adult School. Greetings Rialto community. My name is Dr. Caroline Sweeney. I am the proud principal of Rialto High School. I can't wait for you to come into our virtual platform and learn about my school. Things that I want you to know, our teaching is amazing. Our instructional focus is critical reading and writing across the curriculum. We have a saying here, once the night, always the night. Be prepared to see amazing sports teams, pathways for careers for our students, and so much more. Thanks for being here. Hi, I am Ricardo Garcia, and I am the proud principal of... Good morning. I am Mrs. Hernandez, and I am the proud principal at Simpson Elementary School. Welcome to this year's Parent Summit. As part of our welcome to you, I have our student council who's here to help me with this. Ready? Okay. Who are we? The Seahawks! Tell me about the Seahawks. We are respectful, responsible, and ready to learn. Well, we are here at Simpson Elementary School, the school of academic and personal excellence. After elementary school comes... Middle school! And after middle school comes... High school! After high school comes... College and career! And to get there, you have to... Work hard! Because everyone at Simpson Elementary School knows that when you work hard and follow the rules... Good things happen! Yay! Yeah. Hello families, I'm Berenice Gutierrez, the proud principal here at Chap Elementary, home of the Timberwoods. I'm proud to say that Chap is a beacon of academic excellence in our community. We are one of the schools that offers inclusive practices to all of our students. We are now a proud dual language immersion school, so we are able to offer the gift of biliteracy to all of our scholars. We want to make sure that our Timberwoods have every opportunity to have their own personal academic success. So, go Timberwolves! Greetings, my name is Dr. Ayana Balogun, and I am the proud principal of Warner Elementary. Here I have our wonderful student council, and our model for our school is, we are a shining example of excellence.
Welcome back to the 2022 Parent Summit. Our theme this year is Every Child a Unique Genius. We hope that this experience again is just the beginning of our partnership to ensure that we will work together to engage every student and successfully accelerate essential literacy and numeracy skills. Tonight's session is in all English. Spanish sessions are scheduled for Tuesday nights. Las sesiones de español serán los martes. To begin our workshop, it is my privilege to introduce to you our very own Rialto Unified School District's Lead Innovation Agent, Dr. Patricia Chavez. <laughs> Good evening, family, students, and staff. I am Dr. Patricia Chavez, Lead Innovation Agent of Rialto Unified School District. We are extremely pleased and honored to have you present for the 14th Annual Parent Summit Week 1. We have a great workshop for you today dealing with social-emotional learning, SEL, which promotes skills that help all individuals thrive by engagement, motivation, and a sense of belonging. Parents, please be aware that this week's workshop addresses student engagement and being present in the classroom. Engagement is at the heart of your child's education. When a child is engaged in their own learning, they can truly achieve personal and career fulfillment. This workshop will give you the necessary tools and language to have explicit conversations with your children about their engagement and participation in the classroom during learning. I hope that you are as excited as I am about today's topic. Enjoy the workshops and have a great night. Thank you, Dr. Chavez, for your leadership. I want to thank all our parent teams that helped design our Parent Summit this year. Thank you to our PTA, our District Parent Teacher Association, our DAPAC, District African American Parent Advisory Council, and of course, Alianza Latina. It is my pleasure tonight to showcase Alianza Latina. We welcome all of you parents to the Parent Summit. Uh, Alianza Hello parents, hola padres de familia de Rialto. Uh, my name is Anna Gonzalez. I am your president for Alianza Latina. Soy su presidenta de Alianza Latina. Y este, les damos la bienvenida a todos los padres a esta cumbre de padres. We welcome all of you parents to the Parent Summit. Uh, Alianza Latina is a group of parents uh, that work towards uh, creating a partnership with the district uh, to bring more programs and better resources for our students so they can be successful. Alianza Latina es un grupo de padres donde abogamos y participamos en colaboración con el distrito para traer más, re más recursos para nuestros estudiantes para que que tengan ese apoyo y este puedan alcanzar sus sueños. Thank you for uh, coming to this virtual parent summit visit. Gracias por venir a esta uh, visita virtual de la cumbre de padres. Thank you, Alianza Latina, for continuing to build the bridge that connects our students to their aspirations for the future. You're truly a blessing to our district and our community. I want to remind everybody, thank you for joining us today. Your attendance today has entered you into an opportunity drawing to win a 50-inch TV, an HP laptop, or a Samsung soundbar. We will be announcing the winners by the end of the week. But before we begin our workshop sessions, please type in the chat box the school that your student attends. Time to rep your school. Let me see what schools are with us tonight. Your presence tonight also helps your school win some uh, incentive prizes. So by you coming through, they have the opportunity to win a DJ system, and some branded merchandise. So that way they have their gear necessary for successful community events. All right. As we work to increase our student success, I wanna take a moment tonight to just highlight some of our most impressive scholars this year. Check them out. Elementary school. I grew 58 
points am I already matched to a Golbaka? Hi, my name is Melanie Velasco Ganica. I'm a proud student of Venus Elementary School. I grew 48 points with my ready mascot, Go Bobcats. Hi, my name is Brooklyn Rover. I'm a proud student of Bemis Elementary School. I'm in the fifth grade. I grew 154 points in my iReady reading score. Go Bobcats! Hi, my name is Vanessa and I'm improved on iReady. And I'm in fourth grade and I'm in um, Boyd Elementary. Hi, my name is Camila. I'm in grade, my, I'm in fourth grade and I improved in iReady. Go Bulldogs. Hi, my name is Genesis and I'm in the fourth grade and I proved my iReady reading. Hi, my name is Oscar Rodriguez and now I'm in fourth grade and I was improved in iReady math. Mi nombre es Jesús Camacho. Yo estoy en el 12 grado de Carter High School. Estoy en el programa con la trayectoria artística y medios de comunicación. Mi parte favorita de este programa es el Photoshop. Después de la secundaria, voy a ir a la universidad a obtener un título de administración de empresas. Vamos, Leones. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicholas Perez, a senior here at Carter High School, and I am a part of the JROTC program. In this program, students will learn respect, discipline, and life skills that will help them in any path they choose in life. My favorite part of this program is the strong bond you form with the people around you and the fun activities we do. After high school, I plan on joining the Carpenters Union. I work my way to become a master carpenter. Go Lions! Hello, my name is Owen Napper Jr. and I am a senior at Carter High School and an AVID student. I would like to encourage all students within the district to strive for greatness no matter the circumstances and always be willing to take upon new challenges. I hope you enjoy our parents' summit. Let's go Lions! Hi, my name is Jimena Aguayo. I am a proud student of Casey Elementary School. I am in the second grade. I am proven I read in math 25 points and 73 points in reading. Go Cougars! Hello, my name is Joaquin Harris. I am a proud student of Casey Elementary School. I've improved in I Ready Reading class, no, I Ready Reading 122 points. Go Krugers. Hi, my name is Joseph Liviano. I'm a, I'm a proud student of Casey Elementary. I'm in third grade. I've improved I ready reading 52 points. Go Cougars. Hi, my name is Yaretsi Rodriguez. I'm a proud student of Casey Elementary School. I improved in I ready math 99 points. Go Cougars. Hola, mi nombre es Ariela. Estoy orgullosa de ser una estudiante de la escuela primaria Cortiz. Estoy en cuarto grado. Yo aumenté 63 puntos en mi examen de realidad. Vamos, Cars. Hi, my name is Jacob. I am a proud student of Curtis Elementary School. I am in the fifth grade, and I increased my iReady math score by 39 points, and I'm now at a sixth grade math level. Go, Coats. My name is Jacob. I love to read it. Hi, my name is Tony Brown. I am a, I'm a proud student of Curtis Elementary. I'm in the fifth grade. I increased two grade levels on the iReady math test, and I was in the top 10 for growth in math. Tonight, it's my privilege to welcome the one and only Albert Anaya, a Rialto Unified School District's Autism Behavioral Specialist, who will be hosting our big workshop tonight. We know that every child is a unique genius and it's our responsibility to work together to foster each genius. Um, working with Albert and I, I'm proud to call him a friend and honored to work with such an intelligent special. and specialized individual. With that said, I'm excited, I'm excited to, to introduce to you Mr. Albert, Albert and I. And I. Good evening, parents. Welcome to today's workshop. The title of the workshop today is Strategies to Accelerate Learning by Motivation and Student Engagement. And again, my name is Albert Naya. I'm an ABA specialist here at Rialto Unified School District. So today's disclaimer, this presentation is intended for educational purposes only and do not replace independent professional judgment Statements of facts and opinions expressed are those of the participants individually and unless expressly stated to the contrary, are not the opinion or the position of Rialto Unified School District. 
We make no warranty, express or implied, with respect to such information and disclaim all liability resulting from any use or reliance of this information. So one of the things I wanted to start uh, this evening is to say that every student can learn while having fun and being supportive. And that's going to be our main topic tonight, and we're going to be talking about recommendations and how the brain works to be able to support our students uh, through their development. One of the main quotes that I want to use to this evening is, going to, is, every home is a university and the parents are the teachers. So we're going to do a quick poll. We're going to ask a question for all parents to, to, uh, this evening. And if parents can answer this question, what is the most important thing to you about your child? Is it getting high grades and report cards? Is it having a healthy diet? Is it having a high level of emotional intelligence? Is it attending a great college or university? Or is it having great rapport with your, with your children? So a lot of parents are answering um, E, have a great report with children, which I t totally agree. It's very important to have a great relationship with your child. And then the second is a high level of emotional intelligence, which is gonna be a big topic of, for this evening. And we're gonna be talking about how the brain works and how everything connects to language and how we can support our students uh, at home. So the big questions that we, we all have coming to this workshop is, how can I help my son and daughter? And so we're gonna be focusing on three topics this evening. And the three areas that we wanna cover this evening is, one, coping mechanisms, two, provide motivation, and three, relationship. And we're gonna be calling this CPR for tonight. So here is a picture of the different domains of the brain. If you can see in the front, we have behavioral control, which are, is our executive functioning. In the middle, we have language and we have memory. On, on the bottom, we have emotion. In the back of our brain, we have the visual component. And on the top, we have motor skills. And I'm gonna play a video for you. He's an object, the adult says its name. This makes connections in the baby's brain between particular sense. The key to forming strong brain architecture is what's known as serve and return interaction with adults. In this developmental game, new neural connections form in the brain as young children instinctively serve through babbling, facial expressions, and gestures and adults return the serve, responding in a very directed, meaningful way. It starts very early in life, when a baby coos and the adult interacts and directs the baby's attention to a face or hand. This interaction forms the foundation of brain architecture upon which all future development will be built. It helps create neural connections between all the different areas of the brain, building the emotional and cognitive skills children need in life. For example, Here's how it works for literacy and language skills. When the baby sees an object, the adult says its name. This makes connections in the baby's brain between particular sounds and their corresponding objects. Later, adults show young children that those objects and sounds can also be represented by marks on a page. With continued support from adults, children then learn how to decipher writing, 
and eventually to write themselves. Each stage builds on what came before. Ensuring that children have adult caregivers who consistently engage and serve in return interaction, beginning in infancy, builds a foundation in the brain for all the learning, behavior, and health that follow. So from the video, we can see how important it is uh, to interact with our children. And one of the big components that we're going to learn uh, this evening is language. As you can see in, in the image, language is in the middle of the brain, and it connects through all the components of motor, behavioral, emotion, and visual. And this is an integral part that we're going to be talking about in the next slide. Here, language between the ages of three to five, we expect children to start having interactions and in language with our with adults. Here, a lot of uh, children will start asking questions like, is it raining at grandma's house? Um, they're gonna be learning about receptive, understanding, uh, labeling things around their environment, understanding what is a school bus, uh, following instructions, so such as uh, go get your milk from the kitchen, or go bring your shoes so we can put them on so we can go to the store. And then we also express in themselves so they can be telling you that they're sad or happy or telling you if something hurts. At between the ages of five and eight, this is where they start learning more complex language. And this is where they start understanding context of how language is used. And around the age of, between the ages of eight and 10, they already established the language and ability to have a conversation with adults. And this is going to be important because as adults interact with their children, they're going to be able to teach them what they're feeling and the things and under, teaching them the consequences of actions. So teaching them to connect to the executive um, functioning. Later, around the ages of 10 and teens, they start to learn supralinguistics. This is what they, when they learn about things that are not being said. Here in this image, we have a picture of the prefrontal cortex, which is the area of the executive functioning. And it has a lot of functions uh, in this area. Some of them are empathy, insight, response flexibility, emotion regulation, body regulation, morality, intuition, attuned communication, and fear modulation. And this area is very important for the development of our children as they learn to understand the consequences, be able to understand social skills, what people are saying to them or, or not saying to them, understanding sarcasm and humor, and this is what most, one of the most important components um, as they develop and become adults and engage in learning. But one of the big questions that we have is, how is this area developed? So in this image, it kind of sh it shows us is this area that is critical for attuned communication, understanding long-term consequences, it's, it doesn't really get developed until about their 20s. So this uh, research has shown that the brain doesn't change size from the age of five to the age of 20. And this is important because even though the brain is still the same, their neurons haven't been developed in the prefrontal cortex. And here you can see that the gray matter, is uh, the density increases and the volume decreases. So as the increases the density, that means there's more neurons being connected in those areas. And from this image, you can see that the prefrontal cortex, which is the front of the brain, or in this image, the top, it, it becomes blue around the age of 20. So research has shown that the females finish developing their this area and, and the domains of their brain by the age of 22. And for, more, for most men, 
they finish development of around the age of 24, 25. And this is important because as we interact with our children, sometimes we might we might think that they're 15 or 16 and they had fin they have finished uh, learning. But in reality, the science has shown us that we can we as parents need to continue to model and explain things to them th throughout their uh, ed education through uh, elementary, through middle school, through high school, and even sometimes in the beginning of a college. This area of the prefrontal cortex is important in that they start understanding the consequences of actions. So sometimes we wonder why some of our students didn't plan out correctly how uh, when to start our science project in middle school, when they had a month, uh, a whole month to complete the project. And a lot of that understanding those consequences come from the prefrontal cortex. And if you see here, the middle brain is the age of 12. So you can see it's green. So they still haven't developed too much neurons in this area to understand that their actions of not working on it early is going to is going to impede them and they're going to have to and then they're going to have to start do, doing the project one day or two days before it's due. So this really is crucial because the science has sh shown us that a lot of our development is important is based on language and our parents interacting with their children and teaching them what their consequences are of not doing certain things or doing other things when they feel an emotion and they don't understand what's what they're feeling and because the language is the thing the first develop because remember language is developed uh they start having interactions between three and five conversations but they really start having adult conversation and understanding topics between the ages of eight and ten so as they develop you can use language to start getting them to develop their prefrontal cortex by explaining um, the consequences and also explain their emotions. So if they're sad or scared and they're feeling this and they're not sure because of the prefrontal cortex hasn't developed, you can use language to help them connect the thoughts. And as you saw in the video, all the components, language is connected to the prefrontal cortex, connected to the visual, connected to their emotion. Sometimes they might be seeing things um, in their environment and they might be 10 and not might, might not really understand what's happening. And this is where parents can talk to talk to their child and, and explain to them and use language to let them understand what is it that they're seeing um, at home or in the community. So one of the first areas we're going to talk about is coping mechanisms. The definition is coping mechanisms are the strategies people often use in the face of stress and or trauma to help manage painful or difficult emotions. Coping mechanisms can help people adjust to stressful events while helping them maintain their emotional well-being. The one first thing we want to talk about is to help teach them to identify what's the situation that they are in and what they can do to make it better. And this is something I was talking in the previous slide about when they're in a situation such as math homework and they're feeling this emotion of stress or not knowing what to do, understanding that their prefrontal cortex has, has, has still not been able to capture it independently and understand how to find a solution. And it's, it's our job as parents to help them, to talk to them and explain, okay, you have a math homework. What is something that can help you feel better to make you successful in doing the homework? Sometimes we, we, we have students that they prefer to have some snacks with them because it helps them calm down and then they can focus on what the homework is. Um, some of them is tutoring. So we can teach our, our students, if you're in a situation where you do not understand uh, homework, math homework, instead of feeling frustrated, um, feeling overwhelmed, they do not understand how to find a solution, and, that's, and then we can talk as parents. Look, son, um, yes, this homework is difficult. Um, let's find some possible solutions and then talking to them through it. The idea is instead of giving them the solution, helping them process the information and find the solution. 
So it's great if they can come up with their own solutions, like, oh, I would like some snacks, or can we do some tutoring? Um, I've met some students that like to have uh, some music on the background, and it really helps them tune to the what they're learning and, and do their homework. Another one's reading assignments. So I've talked to students that they like to um, do their reading assignments um, or reading books in a calm area, such as the floor or on a pillow, versus uh, having them read at, at the dining table or any table. And we call this in education flexible seating. So it's not about always what we want our children to be doing, but more of what is it that they need to be accomplish the task at hand and helping them find that solution. So in this situation, if we had our, uh, one of our kids asking that they're overwhelmed with the reading, asking them, I understand uh, what you're feeling. I felt like this uh, too when I was at, um, in school. What is it something that we can do right now to make this easier for you? and helping them process the information and let them come with their own solution. Some students might say that they prefer to go somewhere calm. So this is where we can find a public library or find a, a, a room where there be calm or with um, dimming the lights. But the important thing is that every child is different and, find, and helping them find their own so solutions. Another example would be a science project. Uh, some students love having music as they're doing the project because it gets them excited and focused. Uh, sometimes they might be stressed because they, they're afraid that they're going to do it wrong. So just by doing it with parents or with their best friends eases that uh, emotion and they're able to focus more on the project. Uh, sometimes also buying supplies. Uh, I remember when my sister was in fifth grade and she had a, a science project. She was worried and she came up to me that she needed to finish this project and she didn't know what to do. And I can tell she was overwhelmed with, with this task at hand uh, as a fifth grader. And when I spoke with her, I realized that she was more uh, concerned about the, the materials because she was worried how she was going to make it. And so when I, once I told her that a lot of the supplies we can buy at Michael's, she immediately started to calm down and focus. And then she was able to complete the project in a peaceful way. So we went to Michael's, we walked around, we saw, saw the items that she needed, and she was really uh, happy that instead of having to make those materials, she was able just to buy them and then make the project, and it was easy for her. So some of these are examples of helping our children um, find solutions for the things that they're feeling overwhelmed with. Another thing is explain the why why you want your son or daughter to do school work and how it will help them. Again, this goes back to the prefrontal cortex. They're, as they're developing, they're, they're not understanding why school is important. They might not understand why they have to do math homework or writing or study for spelling. Uh, but because their language has developed, you can use that to get them to connect the dots of you need to, we need to work on spelling so it can help you with your grades and your grades are gonna help you get into uh, the college that you want. That way you can get into your career. And as you connect the dots, it helps them be motivated to do better and to do the, the task at hand. One other thing is for coping, we're teaching our, our children that worry and fear is normal that it is impossible to eliminate. Instead, teach language and strategies to do what they are feeling at, at that moment. So as your children are feeling overwhelmed with the task at hand, and it could be um, learning a new topic, learning how to do uh, calculus, learning about chemistry, teaching them that instead, that instead of telling them not to worry about it, teaching them that, okay, Yes, you are worried, and it's something normal that we all um, feel throughout our life. And the important thing is let's finding uh, a, a solution to this. And so the great great uh, research has shown is as you talk about your own experiences as a teenager or an adult, it helps them connect the dots. Because your children, their intelligence and language has developed, 
So as you're talking to them, they're able to process the information better. One other thing is um, don't say don't worry about it because the emotions don't go away. When I talk to students uh, on campus and they, one of the things they don't like to hear is, you know, hearing don't worry about it because it doesn't go away. They, they're looking for solutions. So as, you, as we help our students and our children with their social skills or with their uh, academic work, um, teaching them to process that feeling, process that emotion, and letting them know is that something normal that we all go through, even as adults, we go through these emotions. But the important thing is what helps us calm down and what helps us find solutions. Um, here's another example. So son comes home worried about studying for a math test because he needs to get a good grade to pass the class. Solution. So you can tell him, what do you need from me to help you do well? And this is where you can help them find solutions. So do you need me to find a tutor? And this can be a family, friend, a classmate, et cetera. Uh, sometimes it's removing the home expectations for that moment. So example, chores. Uh, sometimes I talk to students where they're, they tell me they're overwhelmed because they have to study for a test, but then they have to go home and they have chores to do at home. So the ability to be able to re remove those chores for that moment to eliminate that stress and let them focus more on the academics, it lets them know that they're being supported, that they're being uh, uh, supported at all times, and then the parents understand what they're going through. Also creating a comfortable space, taking them to a better environment. So this could be like a library, uh, if, if it's possible, a, a quiet area in, in the home. Uh, sometimes some students like to put some headphones and listen to common music. So the idea is helping our, ch our children to find solution to what they're feeling and not having to tell them not to worry about it. So the next area that we're gonna talk about is gonna be providing that motivation. So motivation is a desire to act in service of a goal. It is a crucial element in setting and attaining our objectives. Motivation is one of the driving forces behind human behavior. It fuels competition and sparks social connection. So providing motivation, I like to uh, tell parents that we're gonna give our students vitamin E, which is encouragement. Supporting them when they have doubts. Talking about the why in school to find their passion. So a lot of, a lot of students you know, are doing projects, are doing homework, are studying, but as the prefrontal cortex hasn't developed, they're not sure why this is important. Um, a lot of times, the, uh, as adults, as we, you know, get into our late 20s, we then understand why it was important to study when we were in school. So it's important for us as as the parents to let our children know, hey, we need, it's, it's important to study because this is gonna help you learn responsibilities, uh, learn to find your passion. And once you find your passion, you're gonna be loving your work. Also explore their strengths. So a lot of children, they love hands-on activities. We've had, uh, I've worked with students where uh, instead of doing uh, paperwork, when we did activities, they were able to learn more from the topics and the concepts that we wanted to, them to learn. So if instead of having them write, if we made them write funny stories or write about journals about their trips with their parents uh, over the weekend, they become more interested in writing and that can inspire um, them to become future writers. Uh, if you're doing things like science, uh, I have this example where I found it online, and it can it can patch it can catch a child's imagination and get them to love science and want to learn more about it. And as they get motivated, it's easier for them to do their work, and it's less for parents having to push them to do it. It's less of a demand and more of them wanting to learn what 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 is happening um, around them. So in this picture, we have. Um, a bag with water 
And I found this online, so you can always search, you know, fun science projects at home. And in this example, they were poking the bag with pencils, but the science behind it, and I'm not sure what the science is, is as you poke it, it doesn't leak. So, and this is where you can have interesting uh, questions with your children and say, hey, why isn't, if there's a hole in the bag, why is it? It, why is it not leaking? And then make it a fun activity and then doing more research. And this will catch your child's imagination and want to be motivated. It's, and there's going to be an internal motivation to want to learn and go to school and ask teacher questions and do the, the, the tasks that are being provided rather than having to force them to do their project because they don't understand why I have to do this project and turn it in. And same thing for math finding interactive games. So here for uh, math for interactive games, I, I found these uh, activities online. And same thing for art, finding their strengths. So there's different, there's a lot of, um, now with online being accessible to everyone, it's, it's easier to find different types of activities and you can uh, search on Instagram, you can search on YouTube. There's a lot of uh, resources out there. But as you do more activities with your children, they will find their passion. And as they find their passion, their motivation is going to be high and they're going to be wanting to, to learn more. And it's going to be less work for parents to get them to do work because they're wanting to do the work uh, independently by themselves. And their motivation is going to be there. One of the other things that science has shown us is called the PREMAC principle, which is also known as the grandma's rule. So a lot of times when students do things for us, uh, and it could be anything that's neutral, non-preferred, giving them access to something they like. So here is after they're com done completing homework or a test, you can give them access to a highly preferred activity. Uh, so I, I actually was talking to a high school student and she was letting me know that she would love it if she, you know, if her mom would take her to um, get her hair done after a big test. And she said that that would really motivate her. So that was just an example, um, you know, talking to a student uh, last week. So a lot of students, um, when they get access to a preferred thing afterwards, scientifically, it increases their motivation and it increases them wanting to work harder for us parents. And it, uh, making it sure it's age appropriate. So for a high school student, it could be taking them to go get a new shirt or getting them to, we're gonna go to Starbucks or hanging out. Um, and if it's a younger child, so like in this example, we have a son has a spelling test in third grade, let him know that after school, you will go with him to get some ice cream. So as you do more of these activities with them that preferred, but after they've done um, things that are, were difficult for them or non-preferred, they start wanting to do these things. They're wanting to do more spelling tests. They're wanting to do more take tests because they know they're making parents proud and they know that there's, there's something to gain out of um, working hard in, in the school setting, doing their, their work. And it's, it can be also at school. So um, as, you, as, uh, as another example, if your daughter comes home and she's a fourth grader, you say, okay, finish uh, doing your two pages of homework. And once you're done, um, we can go, um, go outside and play ball. The important thing is that is something that they like and not something that we think they like. And that we're gonna talk later about the uh, five love languages um, that is based on research. Also catching them doing something right. So as your son or daughter are doing something good, give them some positive praise and affirmation. Make sure it's meaningful for, for them. They, they know when you mean um, that you love them or, they, or you're, you're just saying it. So the tone, the way you say it, the body language makes a big difference. And research has shown that as you do this at random times, as they're doing things at home, um, and like example, you you have a high school student and um, your son is helping you um, clean the house. As he, he's cleaning the house, you can go and say, hey, son, 
I really appreciate you helping me with this. It means a lot to me. And the tone, the way you say it, it, it increases, they, it releases a lot of um, dopamine and they're going to want to learn more from you. And they want to learn, okay, like, wow, that just, that meant a lot. Wow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help mom uh, and dad clean, clean the house more. So as you do this more, they will want to do things more for you, for you parents. Uh, if you want to research this, you can, it's called the PREMAC principle. So whenever they do something that for you that you ask them of, and you give them access to a pref uh, preferred thing, uh, what you see, you see, you start seeing them want to do it more for you. Um, a lot of times, um, I've seen, uh, families where they have the student do homework and then right after homework, they have to go to do chores. So then that really doesn't fit the PREMAC principle because chores is a non-preferred and you're giving them chores after they did their homework so an idea would be do your home you know five pages of, finish your math homework and your uh, practice your spelling then you can um, go play on the ipad for 20 minutes and then we'll have dinner and then let's say after dinner you need them to complete some chores you can say okay go have some can you go please go finish the chores and after that you can go watch more tv so as you spread as you spread it out it increases that behavior of doing things for you and wanting to do um, whatever is getting them access to preferred things. Now we're going to talk about emotional intelligence. I know a lot of we had a lot of parents um, respond that there is important for the their children to have emotional intelligence. So I'm going to play a video. Just for a moment, what I'd like you to do is I want you to imagine that you're four years old and you're on the ground and you're building a tower and you're really proud of this tower that you're building. And then the next minute, kid comes running along, kicks over your tower and you are outraged. And you feel these feelings bubble inside you of hurt and panic and frustration and helplessness. And just in that moment, an adult comes in close, gets down low and says, honey, what happened? And you see in their eyes, there's compassion. You feel that their body's calm and regulated. And then all those feelings come bubbling out. The frustration, the anger, the helplessness. And this adult goes, oh, yeah, tell me all about it. They don't try and fix it. They don't say to you, don't worry, you can build another one. They just let you feel all that you're feeling. And then they open their arms and you snuggle in, take another deep breath, and then you feel better. And then you get back to building your tower. Now I'd like to see if you can remember what it was like when you were four years old. And perhaps at a time when you felt angry or sad or scared, or you didn't understand what was going on. And how did the adults in your life respond to you? Now, if you were lucky, the adults in your life would have given you lots of space to express how you feel, to listen to those worries and hurts, not try and fix what was going on. But for the majority of people, we had the opposite, which is that we would have been told, stop being so stupid. You don't need to cry. You might have been sent to your room, to the corner. You might have even been hit for making a mistake. Now, why am I talking about children and feelings? So um, in this video, you can find this uh, video on YouTube and it's a 10 minute video and it's pretty powerful. And what our last domain is gonna be relationship and rules without relationship leads to rebellion. And that to me is very powerful that it's important that we connect with our children. Students will gravitate to the person they feel more comfortable with. So there can be parents versus classmates. And remember that they are thinking with feelings. So in, in the images that we showed earlier, the MRI, remember the prefrontal cortex around the age of 12 and 16 is still not as blue as until when they get into their 20s, 20, 22 for a female, about 24, 25 for males. So it helps us really understand that a lot of the decisions that they're making at school, whether they be for with you know friends, 
whether it be with um, taking classes, maybe wanting to take easy classes rather than take harder classes, they're thinking with their feelings and not with their executive functioning, understanding the making uh, decisions or understanding long-term consequences. And this is where parents come in. Teach, because language is already in them and they, they understand what you're expressing to them, but they're not able to connect the dots by you explaining to them, it really helps them process that information. Um, and knowing also that as you build a relationship, um, that each child has different needs. Uh, interact with each child differently based on their interests and needs. And we're gonna talk about the five love languages. I know I saw in the comments that um, how to motivate a student in high school. And the five love languages is for anyone um, ages five to adulthood. Even I did the, uh, the five love languages. Uh, it's for uh, families, it's for couples, it's for children, it's for anyone. And we're gonna talk about it uh, in the next slide. Uh, it, and one other thing, it's, it's okay for adults to say, I'm sorry, and will you please forgive me to their children? And this is very powerful statements that um, Dr. Josh and Christy Straub, uh, they talk about how when students hear this from their own parents, it, it creates a strong connection with them and they have um, they feel comfortable going to you for any so any problem that they might have. So, and it could be with homework, it could be with social situations or other stressors that they might have. And by you saying those two phrases and when it's appropriate, they will understand that you support them, you are encouraging them, that you're in their corner, and that relationship is going to be powerful and they're going to remember that for decades to come because some of the most powerful uh, memories that we we as humans have are the ones that we emotionally felt comfortable with so uh, some of the stuff that I remember uh, when I was in elementary or middle school it was based on a lot of the feelings that I, I felt in that moment so as we have our students feel you know encouraged that we're we, we're their number one support fans, they will remember this forever and they will, you will have that kind of relationship with your son and daughter. And uh, a lot of times I've talked to students in, in high school or in middle school, they, they, they've informed me that they really don't hear from their parents. So that's why they uh, feel that they can't talk to them about what's, what's happening to them, whether it be um, issues with friends, uh, issues with learning. Um, I know I, I talked to uh, a student and she was saying that she was struggling with math, but she felt uncomfortable talking to her parents about it and trying to find support uh, just because, you know, and I, when I asked her, have she, have, have she ever heard um, um, her parents say, I'm sorry, or will you please forgive me? And she said, no, the, I've never heard them say that. And so that kind of goes, gives you more evidence on like how powerful these statements are to our children. By you saying that, you're opening the door for them to feel comfortable and coming to you uh, about anything. So this is the five love languages. It's based on research. Uh, it was created by a psychologist and it really shows us that uh, as humans, we love words of affirmation. Some of us love physical touch. Some of us, some of us love receiving gifts. Some of us love quality time. Some of and some of us act, uh, acts of service. So um, this is you can find this online if you type you go to Google or Yahoo, your uh, service engine, and type in the five love languages, and you can take a test. And it will tell you what your what is it that you really love, and your your kids can do it. Um, uh, if you have like I saw on the, on the chat that what how do you motivate students that are in um, high school? If you're able to get them to take the test and show you the results, and the results are like within three minutes, you can kind of see what is it that they like to hear. Is it the words of affirmation? Is it receiving gifts? Is it quality time? 
And sometimes we might be surprised by the results uh, from our children. We might think they love receiving gifts or access service. And then when you see the results, you see it, it's worse of affirmation and quality time. And that kind of tells us like, hey, like I've been approaching my son and daughter the wrong way, thinking that was they love receiving gifts and access service. But in reality, they just wanted words of affirmation or they just wanted me to spend time with them. And that would be quality time. So I encourage parents to do this with their in their families, with uh, with their uh, spouses, with their children. Um, this this is it can be done with any. It just talks about the human connection between humans. And so I'm going to show you I the one I did. I took this test, and this were my results. So the number one, it's acts of service, and words of affirmation. So these two things are really gets to the core of what I love and how people can connect with me. So when people uh, say to me, oh, Albert, um, you did a great job teaching that student uh, to do his homework. That is the love language I love to hear because it, it motivates me to continue to work hard for our students. Um, acts of service when I uh, someone, I'm at work and then someone says, hey, Albert, let me help you um, write this report or uh, fill out this form. Those kind of services really means a lot to me because it shows me that you're going out of the way to help me. And that means a lot to me. Um, and for other people that's um, like my sister, she took the test and her number one was quality time. So this whole time I thought it was active service, but for her, it was quality time. So when I was trying to do things for her, it wasn't really, I wasn't really connecting to her because I was doing it incorrectly. Her number one was quality time, but because I thought mine was acts of service, I thought hers would be the same. And so this kind of goes back to knowing that each child is different and understand that each, that you have to do it differently. So, you might do this uh, test with your kids and one, you have one son that loves uh, words of affirmation and receiving gifts, but then you have your daughter who loves quality times and acts of service. So by knowing that, you know how to approach each, each child differently. And then by knowing how you're gonna approach them, you're gonna be able to build that relationship and that rapport with them. And they will, they were gonna, and you're gonna be able to motivate them to work harder for you, to do things for you, to see you happy because you have that uh, connection with them. And so this is, this is an example of um, stuff that I, I did, uh, access, uh, words of affirmation and <laughs> receiving gifts. So my sister um, last week got, received a letter from UC San Diego saying uh, she, she got in and she texted me you know the letter and then i said i'm proud of you go buy starbucks with darlene or any of your friends coffee on me because she loves starbucks and she loves hanging out with uh, her friends so even though i was not able to give her quality time in that moment because uh, we're far apart i was able to create a quality time with her best friends so i was trying to uh, motivate her give her uh, what we talked about pre-mac principles so i gave her access to preferred things but I also did um, the love language. So I, I gave her affirmation. So I said, I'm proud of you. And then, uh, and you saw how she responded. She said, oh, thanks, love you, bro. Uh, so as you do this with your children, you're gonna build that rapport with them and they're gonna wanna come to you and show you like, look, mom and dad, I did this test and I got 90%. And, they're, and they wanna make you proud because you have the connection with them. And the most important thing um, that I tell parents uh, as I work with students, is building that rapport and having that connection because they're going to, as you're going to see right now in this next um, slide, uh, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And so these, those are the moments that um, students will always remember with their parents and with their teachers and how they made them feel. Um, uh, I remember that um, when I was in high school, there's I, it's, it's a long time ago and I, it's hard for me to remember many things, 
but one of the remember things is that I had uh, one male teacher in English that told me to apply to UC San Diego because he, he believed in me and he wanted something better for my life. And I remember those words that he said to me and I wasn't, I didn't know if I could ever go to college and I applied. And then when I got in, I was the first one, he was the first one that I told. And so it kind of goes back to sometimes students want students want to hear the words of affirmation. They want to know that they're doing well. They might not be getting 100%, but maybe they got an 89. That was way better than a 70. And so re letting them know, hey, that was amazing. I know you've been studying hard for that 89%. I'm so proud of you. And they will remember these things forever. So I want to say thank you for joining this presentation. Um, Thank you, parents. Thank you, and have a good night. Big thank you to Mr. Albert and Naya. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you to our Rialto Unified School District Special Education Support Services team. Um, Thanks for taking the time to prepare and deliver tonight's workshop. Appreciate it, man. Um, as we move forward, it's my honor again to uh, showcase some of our district's most impressive scholars. So you'll cue that. that Hi, my name is Alejo Vadas Mejia. I am a fifth grader and a proud student at Dalahan. I grew 48 points on I Ready in Math. Go Dalmatians! Hi, my name is Allison Santian and I am in the second grade at Dalahan. I grew 74 points on I Ready Reading. Go Dalmatians! Hi, my name is Fergus Lewis. And I'm a second grader at Dalhan. I grew 66 points and I ready reading. Go Dalhan! Hi, my name is Nora Edwards and I'm a student at Dalhan. I'm, I'm in the second grade and I grew 37 points in my I ready math. Hi, my name is Giovanni Ortega. I am a proud first grader up at the elementary. I increased my already math scored by 28 points. Hi, my name is Catherine Deshane. I am a proud fourth grader at Dunn Elementary. I increased my already reading score from fourth into sixth grade. Uh, go Dolphins! <laughs> Hi, my name is Kuru. He was, and I increased 58 points on already math. Go Dolphins! Hi, my name is Daisy Valenzuela. I am a proud fourth grader at Dunn Elementary. I increased my iReady reading score by 77 points by reading books. Go Dolphins! Hola, mi nombre es Aileen Cruz. Estoy orgullosa de ser estudiante de la escuela secundaria Eisenhower. Estoy en el grado 12. Yo he sido reclasificada del programa de aprendiz de inglés y al mismo tiempo estoy orgullosa de formar parte del programa de enfermería y gracias a ello haber recibido la certificación como de soporte vital básico. ¡Vamos, Águilas! Hello, my name is Malcolm Webb. I am a proud student of Eisenhower High. I am in the 12th grade and I'm managing a 3.0 grade average. ¡Go Eagles! Hello everybody, my name is Isaiah Solomon. I am a 12th grader here at Eisenhower High School. I help around the school as an office clerk and as a link career historian. I have maintained an I-point an GPA that's placed me as honor roll in multiple years of my high school years, and I take a vast amount of AP classes and honor roll, honor courses. Go Eagles! Hi, my name is Reese McKinney. I am a proud fifth grade student from Fitzgerald Elementary School. I'm here to talk about my amazing growth in I Ready Reading. I grew 107 points. Go Foxes! Hi, my name is Renata Garcia. I'm in second grade. I have a progress and 168 points and I read reading go Hi, my name is Lawrence Michael. 
Some people call me Larry. I am a proud fifth grader at Fitzgerald Ele Elementary. I have progressed 80 points in I Ready Reading Diagnostic. Go Foxes! Hi, my name is Sienna Price and I'm a third grade student in, in Fitzgerald Elementary. I, on my I Ready progress, I grew 68 reading points. Go Foxes! I love this school. Hi, my name is Corey. I'm a proud student at Frisbee Middle School. I'm in sixth grade. I increased 76 points on my iReady test. Go Falcons! Hi, my name is America. I'm a proud student of Frisbee Middle School. I'm in seventh grade and I've increased 46 points on my iReady reading test. Go Falcons! Hi, my name is Makai. I'm a proud student at Frisbee Middle School. I'm in eighth grade and I have increased my, gra my grade levels to, um, from iReady. From I, I have about like 183 points. Go Falcons! Yeah! Hi, my name is Annabelle. I am a proud student of Frisbee Middle School. I am in the sixth grade. I have increased in 119% in my iReady reading test. Go Falcons! Big shout out to all our kids. Thank you for working hard this year. You definitely deserve the praise and the respect and the pride that goes along with it. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you our closer for tonight, um, a colleague, a friend, and an impactful educator with over 25 years of teaching experience, the one and only Rialto Unified School District's professional development strategist, Mr. William Renderos. Hello, my name is William Prenderos and I am the professional development strategist for the district. I support Dr. Delgado in the areas of professional development and the Parent Institute. I'm here today to tell you about my love for reading. Reading has always been an important part of my emotional and professional development. I read to help my emotional, spiritual, intellectual, and physical wellness. I also read to be up to date with new ways of helping young and adult learners engage in learning experiences. I have two sons. Ever since they were little, I would read to them in Spanish. They are now teenagers and enjoy reading in English as well as in Spanish. I invite you to attend the next week's session, Strategies to Accelerate My Students' Reading Skills. This session will give you tools you can use to support your students. Along with that, you will be able to receive a book, and other resources that can be used for students at any age. That's not all, parents. Your name will also be entered into a giveaway of a 50-inch television, a laptop, and a soundbar for every day you attend. You will have to be present in order to win. Today's winners will be notified by the end of the week. Continue attending, and you can also be a winner. There's more. Your school will also have an opportunity to win a sound system and a school spirit merchandise. All you need to do is attend as many sessions as possible. Thank you for being here today. Our next session, again, will be on Thursday, April 7th, Strategies to Accelerate My Students' Reading Skills. Parents, you are an important part of your children's education. Your love and support will go further than you imagine because every child a unique points in my I-Ready Math to a robot class. 
Hi, my name is Melanie Velasco Gonica. I'm a proud student of Venus Elementary School. I grew 48 points with my ready mascot. Go Bobcats! Hi, my name is Brooklyn Rover. I'm a proud student of Bemis Elementary School. I'm in the fifth grade. I grew 154 points in my iReady reading score. Go Bobcats! Hi, my name is Vanessa and I'm improved on iReady. And I'm in fourth grade and I'm in um, Boyd Elementary. Hi, my name is Camila. I'm in grade, my, I'm in fourth grade and I improved in iReady. Go Bulldogs! Hi, my name is Genesis and I'm in the fourth grade and I proved my iReading reading. Hi, my name is Oscar Rodriguez and now I'm in fourth grade and I was improved in iReading math. Mi nombre es Jesús Camacho. Yo estoy en el 12 grado de Carter High School. Estoy en el programa con la trayectoria artística y medios de comunicación. Mi parte favorita de este programa es el Photoshop. Después de la secundaria, voy a ir a la universidad a obtener un título de administración de empresas. Vamos, leones. Hello everyone, my name is Nicholas Perez, a senior here at Carter High School and I am a part of the JROTC program. In this program, students will learn respect, discipline, and life skills that will help them in any path they choose in life. My favorite part of this program is the strong bond you form with the people around you and the fun activities we do. After high school, I plan on joining the Carpenters Union. I work my way to become a master carpenter. Go Lions! Hello, my name is Owen Napper Jr. and I am a senior at Carter High School and an AVID student. I would like to encourage all students within the district to strive for greatness no matter the circumstances and always be willing to take upon new challenges. I hope you enjoy our Parent Summit. Let's go Lions! Hi, my name is Simena Aguayo. I am a proud student of Casey Elementary School. I am in the second grade. I am proven I read in math 25 points and 73 points in reading. Go Cougars! Hello, my name is Joaquin Harris. I am a proud student of Casey Elementary School. I've improved in iReady reading class, no, iReady reading 122 points. Go Krugers. Hi, my name is Joseph Liviano. I'm a, I'm a proud student of Casey Elementary. I'm in third grade. I've improved iReady reading 52 points. Go Cougars. Hi, my name is Yaretsi Rodriguez. I'm a proud student of Casey Elementary School. I improved in I ready math 99 points. Go Cougars! Hola, mi nombre es Dariela. Estoy orgullosa de ser una estudiante de la escuela primaria Cortiz. Estoy en cuarto grado. Yo aumenté 63 puntos en mi examen de Ready. Vamos, Cars! Hi, my name is Jacob. I am a proud student of Curtis Elementary School. I am in the fifth grade and I increased my iReady math score by 39 points and am now at a sixth grade math level. Go Coats! My name is Jacob. I love to read it. Hi, my name is Tony Brown. I am a, I'm a proud student of Curtis Elementary. I am in the fifth grade. I increased two grade levels on the iReady math test and I was in the top 10 for growth in math. 